Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today this is the ninth episode of my series where I teach you guys how to build a full stack application using React, Node and MySQL. And it's been a week since I've posted the last episode because I'm, I'm studying for my finals and it's practically over. So I'm going to start posting really consistently right now. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, in the previous video, we were able to create our basic login and registration system, as you can see right here. Um, and you're able to log in, right? For example, we have uh, an account, which is the um, Pedro Tech as a username. It is stored in our database. And the password is password123. Um, um, if I try to log in like this, you'll see that if I inspect my element and I go to console, it will show that um, it is correct, right? It's going to show I'm logged in. And if I change this a bit and just delete, for example, a character, this user doesn't exist in our database. So it should say user doesn't exist. And similarly, if I just put a wrong password, it says um, wrong username and password combination. And this is basically what we did in the previous video. But in this video, we're going to implement some sort of um, authentication system. I don't want to overcomplicate stuff, but I'm going to be using JSON web tokens um, in order to secure our website. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. That's the plan for this video. But before we start the tutorial, if you guys could leave a like, like and subscribe if you're not subscribed I would massively appreciate that because it will help push my videos to more people and just motivate me more to make more videos um, I love making the, the this videos so I would really appreciate if you guys did that so let's get into the tutorial if you're interested in a more in-depth um, tutorial about um, JWTs and how to create an authentication system. I have a video which I'm going to link up here in a card. It's probably popping up right now. Um, but in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to whenever the user signs up or whenever the user um, tries to log in, we're going to generate a token using the JSON web token library, then we're going to um, that token will contain probably like some pieces of information like a username, or the user's ID, because we might want to use that ID for, for stuff. And um, then we're going to return that token to our user, right? And we're going to store that token in our session storage. And many of you guys who if you got if you're already familiar with JSON web tokens, you might be cringing at this, that we're going to be storing it at the session session storage. However, the thing is, um, since this is a beginner full stack course, I don't want to overcomplicate stuff. And storing your your tokens in the session storage or in the local storage is the easiest way to make it work. And it's the easiest way to explain how it works. If you want to secure a website against different types of attacks like XSS, um, you might I, I have again the other video which I which I showed I stored the token in the cookies and in this video I'm going to be storing it in the session of storage it is safer to store it in the cookies however um, just to keep it simpler and especially because this is a beginner course I am going to keep it I, I'm going to store it in the session storage so so let's start doing this um, let's come here to our server folder and inside of here we're going to open up um, our um, users file because this is where all of our login and registration stuff happens right and inside of here we're actually we're going to open up our terminal over here and I'm going to come over here and just um, clear this out and we're going to install some packages inside of the server folder so I'm gonna see the ins inside of the server folder and we're gonna install um, the JSON web token package so to do that just write npm install and then JSON web token and this over here is a package that we're going to be using to generate the tokens and also to validate them. So in order to do that, we're going to come here at the top instead of this file, and we're going to import some stuff from the library. So we're going to say const equal to require, then JSON web token. And in, over here, this is the only part where we're going to like in this file, the only thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be generating the um, the token. So in order to generate the token, we need to use a function called sign, which basically creates the token. So we're going to import sign. And inside of the login, we only want to generate this token um, after like there, if the user actually logs in, if the user has the right to log in. So we made the checks over here if the user exists. And then we made a check to see if the user has the correct username and password combination. So if it passes both of those checks over here, we want to generate the token. So to do that, we're going to come over here and say const, and we're going to create a variable called access token. You can call it whatever you want. But this is the, the name that we're going to use. And we're going to set it equal to sign. And then inside of here, this is what you're, you want to put you want to put first of all, the the token. So the data, the, the data, the payload that you want to, um, that you want to keep secure, because what happens with, with JSON web tokens is it's going to hash this, the, this data into a, a string of uh, letters and numbers. And in order to make it so that um, someone who has access to it doesn't know what it is, right. So 
over here, we're going to pass some sort of data um, that we want to be able to turn it into our token. And the data we want to pass, as I mentioned before, is maybe a username and the ID because we want to keep track of the username for, um, for example, displaying the username in, the, in our page if we want to, right? Or, and we, or maybe because um, when you write a comment, you want to be able to access what is the user's username. Having the username in hand is really important. And we want to keep the ID because um, if you're a user logged in and you want to make requests, you want to have the identifier with you at all times. So storing both of them is really important. So I'm just going to um, create a variable here called username. And that's going to be part of our payload. And we're going to pass, um, we're going to get the username by use, doing user dot username. If you recall, um, that's basically what we're doing over here. We're grabbing the user. So if you use user dot username, we're just grabbing the username directly from the user. And then we want to grab the ID. So um, we're going to say ID. And we're going to grab the ID from the user as well. So all we're doing here is we're grabbing our token, we're creating it. And the data inside of the token is just an object containing the username and the ID of the user that's logging in. And then we have to pass some sort of secret that is going to be able to protect our our tokens. So right now, since I, I want to like, I'll, I'll change this later. But right now, let's just for tests, just write something like um, important secret, but it's just a string. And I would recommend um, to keep it even safer. I would recommend just um, going to some sort of random letter, like random string generator, and just say like using that as your secret, because you don't want to keep you, you want to keep it secure, you don't want to just put random words like I'm doing over here. But just so that we don't like just for simplicity reasons, let's just do it like this. And then this should generate our token and store it inside of our access token variable over here. And what do we want to do with it? Right now, all we're doing is if you're logging in, we're just returning a variable saying log like a string saying logged in. And this is what it's console logged um, in our in our page, right? But instead of that, um, what we want to have is we want to have access to that token in our front end. So to do that, we're going to return as a JSON, our access token like this. And why are we doing that? Because when we receive that data from in our front end, we're going to set that token into our storage. So one of the storages, the session storage in this case, and from that session storage, whenever we make any requests, uh, we're going to use that that token uh, as part of the headers of the request, you're going to see that later, if that doesn't make any sense, but we're going to pass that um, token directly from the session storage to the headers in each request we want to validate. And that's how we're going to um, know which user is actually uh, making the request. So we're going to send this back so that we have access to it in our front end. And after we do that, we can actually test to see if this is working. Um, we can come here to our application. And we can check to see the response from this request. If you're not familiar with this, I'm using Google Chrome. So um, with Google Chrome, you can easily go to the network tab. And over here, you can see all the requests that are currently being made um, in your application. So what we want to do is we want to make a request to login. So I'm going to put the correct password and username combination. And what should happen is when I click log in, um, you can see a request is made, it was successful. And in the response, instead of responding with logged in, it should respond with a token. So you can see over here, it's just a random like string of letters and um, numbers and also like dots and whatever. Um, and we're correctly grabbing it and sending it to our backend. So to our front end, sorry. So what do we want to do with it in our front end? Well, we just want to save it in our session storage. Again, with the Google Chrome DevTools, you can easily access your, your, your session storage items, your cookies, whatever you want through the application tab. So over here, you can see we have nothing in our session storage. And when you log in, we want to insert a, an element over here called an access token with the token right over here. Now, as I rem as I uh, told you guys, um, this won't be 100% secure, especially because it is vulnerable to XSS. However, again, this, since this is a beginner tutorial, I don't think um, if you're learning J J JWTs for the first time, I don't think you should be building something that um, people are going to try to attack. I think it's a very, very important topic that you should look into like into it very in depth. And if I were to try to make this as secure as possible, it would overcomplicate the series. But just keep in mind that the reason why this is insecure is because you can very easily access this variables through JavaScript inside of your page. So someone who is over here, they can access their their, their tokens by um, using JavaScript, which means people can just inject JavaScript and retrieve that token, and then pretend to be the person who has that token. That's that's a very simplistic way of explaining um, the XX, XSS attack. However, um, this is basically what happens. So 
right now we just want to store um, that variable over here. So to do that, what we want to do is we're going to come to our front end. So to the react part of our application, and in the login um, page, the login component, this is where everything is happening, right? Right now, all we're doing is we're making a post request to this endpoint, sending the data and in the response, we're just console logging the response. But what we want to do now is we want to be able to identify first if, um, if, if the user if the response dot data was an error, or if it was like a success. And if you go to users, you'll see that um, right now, um, we are sending if there's any errors, we send an object containing an error, right? So both of them contain an error variable inside of the object inside of the response. And when we send the access token, it's just a string, it isn't any object. So why is that important? Because if we want to identify any errors in our front end, all we have to do is we have to write an if statement inside of here and ask if response.data.error is valid. Because there, if we if we successfully log in, there won't be any variable any um, any properties or any keys called error in the response to data object. So if this is true right now, let's just try alerting the response dot data dot error and alerting is just appearing like it will just show that the alert box and just like just show the the, the error that we're that that we are facing, right. But if this isn't true, if, if, if there's no errors, we want to set some sort of items into our session storage and to set an item to our session storage, you just have to write session session storage, then set item. And over here, you pass two variables on um, the first one two arguments, sorry, the first one is the key for your for your value. So we're going to call it access token. And then the value for um, this item, which is going to be um, the access token, the actual token that we receive, and the token will be received by um, the response. So we'll say response data. And this should be it because we already made a check over here asking um, if it was any errors, if it isn't, then at the end, we'll just return the, the access token. And then we store it in our session storage. Let's see if that's working. Um, first, let's um, come over here. And this uh, like the, the username and the password are correct. So if we try to log in with this, it should create a variable over here in our session storage and store the token. So let's see if it happens. You can see it works, it creates an item with a key called access token, and a value which is our our token. Um, but let's delete this for now, just so you guys can see something. If I try to log in with something else like a wrong username, um, what will happen is it will alert a message saying user doesn't exist. And um, the value is apparently it's trying to create the value, but it doesn't send the the um, the token. So it tries to create some sort of item in our in our session storage. This isn't good. So let's fix this. Um, the reason why this is happening is because we're writing an if statement that isn't um, complete. Um, we should use an if else statement. So like if there's any errors, we don't want to set anything to our session storage. So let's just say um, else like this. And then let's just pass this right over here. And let's try to log in with the wrong username again, you'll see it will say user doesn't exist, but there isn't anything created in our session storage. So that's great. Um, we're now able to create that value in our session storage. However, why do we need that? Um, well, an example of why do we need that is because come, if we come here to our homepage, and we click on any of these posts, I'll click on this one. Um, you'll see that um, we have comments, right? And they're beautifully made over here. I wrote them as as an example, um, in the previous videos, but we don't know who wrote those comments. And why would we allow someone who isn't authenticated someone who isn't logged in to write a comment, we want to be able to um, check to see if that person is actually logged in. And if that person is the person they're saying they are right, because a person can pretend to be logged in. And uh, there are various different attacks that do that. Um, but we want to make sure that that person is the person they're saying they are. So how do we do that? Well, whenever we make the request to add a comment, right now, we're just uh, like, for example, I'll just write here comment, and try to add this comment, you'll see it will just add the comment, there's no checks to see if the person is logged in or not. So what we want to do is we want to, whenever I make this request, pass some sort of um, validation middleware to that request that checks to see if the user has a correct um, JWT um, stored in their in their session storage. So to do that, what we do is we come here to our backend again, and we want to create a middleware folder inside of here. And for those who don't know what middlewares are, I have a full video on middlewares. Um, it's just a function that runs before a request. And he basically um, checks to see if you want to continue with the request or not. So um, we're going to create a middleware for authentication. So let's just come over here and say auth middleware. And um, JS, 
and this middleware over here will be pretty simple. All we want to do is we want to be able to um, grab the token that is sent through the front end, then validate by using JWT of a JWT um, function called verify. And we're going to verify to see if it's valid. If it is valid, then we want to um, continue with the request and send the comment and add the comment to our database. If not, we're going to return some sort of JSON uh, a response in the request with some sort of error. So that's the idea. And to create a middleware, we're going to come over here and just say um, const, let's call this middleware validate token. And we're going to say validate token like this. And uh, middleware is just a function that has a rec, a res and a next and rec res is basically the same functions that the same arguments that we've been using so far, they are used to re to get stuff from the request and send stuff back using the re the response. And next is a function that you call when you want um, the request to move forward. So this function will run before a request. So for example, we have our comments route over here. It, what we're going to do is we're going to pass this validate middleware um, into this over here and basically say that whenever someone makes a request to this comments endpoint, they want to first go to this function, make a bunch of checks, including to see if the user is authenticated, it's correctly authenticated. And if the user is, then we call this next function like this. And basically what that means is we want to continue forward with our request. So it means it will just come here and do whatever is over here, which is just um, creating and adding the comment to the database. But if it doesn't, um, if it isn't a valid token, then we should return directly from here, um, some sort of error to let the user know in the front end that they are not authenticated. So our middleware will be very simple in the sense that what we want to do is we want to grab the data from our front end. We want to grab the token from the front end. So to grab the token, I'll say const access token like this. And how are we going to pass this to our backend? How are we going to pass um, this the token from the front end to the backend? So there's many ways of doing this. I'm going to pass it through the headers. And headers is just an, uh, an object that exists in your um, in your request. And we're going to I think that's the simplest way of of doing it since we're we're not storing it in the cookies, we're just passing it directly through the request. So to access variables that we're going to pass in the headers, all we have to say is rec header. And then inside of here, we pass the name of the header object that we're going to pass. Um, we haven't created that we haven't pa we're not currently passing this in the front end, but we're going to do that later. So let's assume that in the front end, we'll pass um, some sort of um, key in the headers called access token. And this should have a value of the actual access token in our session storage. So what we're going to do now is just first of all, ask to see if there's actually something being sent in the request, right? Because if there isn't, then we're basically where we know the user's not authenticated, right? They might have a wrong um, JWT, to like a, a, a wrong token. However, um, that's a check that we're going to do later. Right now, the first thing we need to check is to see if the user is trying to make a comment without even logging in first. So to do that, let's just ask if not access token. So if there's no access token, if this doesn't return any access token, we just want to um, return from this a response.json. And this this response.json will be um, a, a, an object containing an error, and we'll say something like user not logged in, something like this. Um, let me not capitalize everything. <laughs> um, I usually do that for some reason, but I'll just say user not logged in. And if the user has an access token, we now need to check to see if the access token is actually valid if they didn't just make up the string and it's pretending to th that it actually is the, the, the correct one. So to do that, we're going to be using a function called verify, which is from JSON web tokens. So JSON, JSON, oh, I need to say require um, JSON web token, like this um, web token like this. And this function will basically verify to see if we are correct. And it will also um, parse back the, the token in the sense that we can access the values that we that we stored in it, the payload that we stored in it, if we want to, um, we're not going to be, do, be be accessing them right now, all we want to worry is to try to see if it's valid. So we're going to run our try catch, um, which is something we have to do because um, we're going to be verifying it. So I'm going to say try catch. And in the catch we'll grab any errors that um, occurs. And in the try, what we're going to try is basically we're going to try to grab a valid token a variable, this should just represent uh, if the token is valid or not right now. And we're going to set this equal to verify. 
And what we're going to verify is we're going to verify our access token that we got from the request and compare it using the same secret that we used to create the token. So that's extremely important. We're going to pass this secret over here. And that's the way that it's going to know if it's valid or not. And when we pass this, now what we do is we come over here and we want to just ask, okay, if um, there's any valid token, if it's valid token, um, it's true. It's not validate token. We need to ask if valid token like this is true. Then we want to do something. Um, for example, I just want to move forward with the request. So return next and actually um, create and add the comment in our in our database. Or uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be just for the comment section uh, endpoint. We can pass this um, request this middleware to any kind of request that we want to have in our application. So this just means that it will move forward with the request. And if there's any errors, we want to return um, res.json and we'll return some sort of object with an error message and the error will be the error that that it received right um, so we just want to pass that as part of the error message so this is basically the middleware done and what we want to do now is we just want to export this um, so that we have access to it in every single file every single route that we want to validate some sort of endpoint so I'm gonna do module.exports and pass the validate um, token middleware like this. So this is basically done. And if we want to, for example, use this middleware in the comments um, endpoint, we just have to import the middle, the validate function, um, validate token middleware like this, we're going to say dot slash, um, actually, I need to go back twice, and go to the middleware folder, and then the auth middleware, and just grab the validate token middleware. And all I have to do to pass a middleware in any endpoint is just pass it right over here. Just pass the name of the function right after the request. And what this means is it will receive the request, then go through this middleware, do all the checks that it needs, valid, see if it's a valid token, if everything is correct, and the next function is called, then we'll come over here and do whatever is over here. So now that we have this done, all we have to do is we have to come to our front end over here. And we have to pass the token as part of the headers. That's all we we, we assume that we're going to do that when we created our middleware, remember, so to do that, we have to come to our pages folder and go to our um, wh wherever we're doing uh, our request, right? The, in this example, we're just um, passing, we're just authenticating for the comment section, but we're going to do that for other requests as well. So the to create a comment, um, it's done actually in the posts uh, .js um, file, as you can see over here, we have a add comment function. And right now what it's doing is just um, sending the new comment um, as part of the request. And then it just um, does nothing it just adds the comment to our front end, right? So it isn't actually validating or checking to see anything. So what we want to do is we want to pass inside of this axis post, we want to pass our headers. So to do that, we're just going to come over here. And I'm going to put a comma right after the the, the body object the, the data that we're sending, we want to pass another object, which is going to be it's considered the config object in any request. And inside of it, you can pass a headers object. So I'm going to say headers. And the headers will only contain um, one piece of information right now. And that piece of information is a variable called access token. And this needs to be exactly the same as what we wrote in our middleware. So I'm going to open up my middleware over here. And you'll see that um, I, I called it access token. So we need to write access token. And over here, we have to pass the actual token. And if you recall, um, to set uh, our, our token in our session storage, which currently it should be, let me look at the application. Oh, it isn't. Let, let's try to log in just to see. So I'll come over here, write Pedro tech, and pass a password. So password, one, two, three, um, you'll see that the token is generated. So how do I retrieve this value that is in our session storage, I just come over here and say session storage dot get item, and pass the key. So the key is access token. So I'll just say access token like this. And now we're passing our access token in our headers, which is amazing, right? So let's test to see if this works. What should be happening right now is, um, if we are authenticated, which we are right now, we should come here, for example, to any of this, um, I'll just click on this example, the second the second post, and let's just add a comment. Um, hey, guys, something like this, you'll see that it works. And why it works is because we are authenticated. But let's delete our our, to our session storage token, let's delete it from here. 
by just coming over here and clicking on, on delete. Now we're not authenticated. It will try to make a request and send a random to like it won't send anything because there's nothing in our session storage. So if we say, um, did this work as a comment, just a, as an example, it shouldn't have, but it happened. So uh, I'll just take a look at what happened and I'll be back in a second. Okay, guys, um, I actually didn't spend any time in this. What I'm thinking is this actually worked. But let's try to refresh the page. You'll see that. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> it wasn't a bug. It's just that we haven't um, finished writing our code. What happens is you saw that we try to write a comment, but we're not authenticated. So it appears here, but um, it's not actually in our database. And why that's happening is because right after the request is done, no matter what happens, it just adds something to our UI. So what we want to do is we want to come to our comments over here. And you know that if the the comment is if the request is, is correctly done, it just returns the comment. But if there's any errors, it should return an object containing the value error. So similar to what we did with the login, we should come over here and say if there's any errors in the response. So if response dot data dot error, then we want to um, alert a message such as the response dot data dot error, right? Um, we just want to show the, the the error to the user. And else, if this if there's no errors, we want to this we want to actually add the comment to our um, UI. So we want to add our comment to our list of comments in our React component. So this should be working now. Let's just come over here, try to add another comment. Um, you'll see that actually it doesn't appear. It just says object object. And the reason why it's saying object is we're trying to actually pass an object. Um, to fix that, I'll just come over here and I won't alert anything right now. I'll just console log um, the response dot data dot error. You'll see what happens. Um, now, if we try to add a comment, you'll see that in our console log, it should console log the error, which is an object containing JWT malform because there's no JWTs in our session storage. But if we log in over here, um, we'll try to log in with Pedro tech and we'll try to pass a password like this one, two, three, um, it should log in, then we come over here. And we go to the same um, post that we have, and we try to add a comment, it should not work. And if I refresh the page, it works because it correctly validates everything. Now, that's um, kind of the idea of what we're doing. Um, you see everything kind of works perfectly, we should we can add the same validate token um, middleware to any request that we want to add. Um, one thing that I want to do is after we log in, currently nothing is happening. So currently, we, we just have to move um, to another place. So what I want to do is I just want to whenever you successfully log in, it should redirect you to the home page. So let's make that work. Um, let me just come over here to our login page. So in our components, our login component. And to make this work, it's very simple. I'm going to be using something from um, React Router DOM, which we've we've dealt with before, which is the use history hook. So I'm going to say um, import from React Router DOM. And it's going to be the use history hook like this. And right here at the top, let's just create a history object, which we've done be before, and just set it equal to use history. And now all we have to do is after you successfully, um, uh, like you successfully logged in, we just want to say history dot push. And we want to push to the um, slash home um, route, which is just the slash the, the empty slash. And let's see if this is working. I'll refresh, I'll delete my my current session storage token over here. And I'll just try to log in again by saying Pedro tech and going to password one, two, three. And when I click on login, you'll see that now we are in the home page. And if I try to make any comments like this, it works because we are logged in. And if I don't, um, just as a final example, you'll see that if I delete this, um, you'll see we can't make any comments, it won't work because we're not authenticated. So that's the basic idea of the video. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, this isn't the most secure way of doing it. A lot of um, companies, a lot of websites had issues with storing their tokens um, in either the local storage or session storage. But believe me, uh, if you're a beginner, if this is your first introduction to authentication to uh, creating a login system, this is a perfectly um, good example, because um, you shouldn't be wor too worried about security in the beginning, it will just overcomplicate stuff. And you will definitely have trouble understanding if you try to create the most secure website um, at first, right. And if you're more experienced, I have other videos on JWTs where I don't store the, the token in the session storage or in the local storage. 
Also, I don't think I am the best in security. I, I, I understand a lot about authentication and authorization. However, I'm definitely vulnerable. Like any website that I create will definitely have some sort of access points to um, hackers if they want to. Um, so I would say that if you really want to learn about how to protect your website against hacking, um, definitely read some books on it. Um, research more. Don't try to build a whole like business out of this tutorial series. So that's just a remark that I wanted to make because a lot of you guys have been asking me for um, uh, to add authentication to this. I just wanted to add a very simple example, which is what I did. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm going to start posting again three times a week, even more because I'm going to post this on Sunday and then I'm going to post another video on Monday because my finals are almost over. My semester is almost over and I'm going to I'm going to be um, it's going to be summer. So I'm going to be uh, have, a, have a lot more time to post videos. So that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.